cartoon recaps here. In today's video, we will be covering an animation movie called Soul. Spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with Joe, an aspiring jazz musician who currently works as a temp. Now, his students play their instruments discordantly. One student breaks his trombone then the other one uses his instrument to suck off some pebbles from the ground. Caleb gets caught using his phone and tosses his phone toward another student's saxophone. Rachel is then reminded that it's her turn, but she reasons out that she forgot her saxophone. Joe turns his attention to Connie, who then plays an improvised solo. Everyone giggles and then Joe steps in to remind them that it's okay even if Connie is not playing well. He proceeds to share his story about being taken by his dad to a jazz club. While he did not like that idea, he was captivated by the performer's talent in playing the piano. Joe plays the piano while he relates the story. He continues playing trilling notes and tells them that it's that moment that he knew that he was born to play. A knock on the door interrupts their moment. Principal Arroyo apologizes for the disturbance. She then delivers the excellent news that Joe is now a full-time band teacher. Joe does not appear to be excited about the news. He goes back inside and looks at photos of musicians on his wall. Joe's mom, Libba, tells Joe that he should accept the offer. Joe promises that he has a plan. Libba adds that he should have a backup plan in case his plan does not work. Libba reminds Joe that they sacrificed for him to get an education and that he should say yes as we need more teachers in this world. Joe says he'd definitely accept the offer but sighs thereafter. Joe's phone rings as he gets a call from a former student named Curly. Curly informs Joe that he's now the drummer in the Dorothea Williams Quartet and that they will kick off the show tonight at the half note. Joe is quite impressed and congratulates Curly. Joe adds that he'd die a happy man if he could perform with Dorothea Williams. Curly then tells Joe that today is his lucky day. Joe wastes no time and rushes towards the half note. He can hear a saxophone playing upon going down the stairs. He removes his hat, wipes his head, and admires a musician's photo on the wall. Curly welcomes him. They hug, and Curly explains why Joe filling in for Leon is such a great help. Dorothea Williams is playing with her saxophone when Joe and Curly start to approach her. As soon as Dorothea stops playing, Curly introduces Joe to her. Letting her know that he was his former band teacher, Joe introduces himself. Dorothea does not seem to be impressed, she tells him to start playing as they don't have all day. Before Joe can settle down on a piano chair, the band starts playing jazz music. Joe asks what they are supposed to play, but the band continues playing. Joe is able to catch up and play corresponding chords. Eventually Joe is in the zone and plays improvised trilling notes until the music ends. All the band members are stunned by how good he plays. Joe apologizes, thinking they are mad at him, but Dorothea asks him to get a good suit for the show later tonight at 9. Joe exits out of the half note ecstatic. Joe is on the phone with someone as he shares how excited he is about his new gig. He is almost hit with a pile of bricks. He crosses the pedestrian lane without paying attention. A dog almost gets him, so he steps back towards a motorcycle that also almost hits him. Thinking he is now safe, he proceeds to resume talking on the phone and moves forward, but he steps on a manhole instead. Joe becomes a soul and is confused by the new environment he's in. He sees a bright light and runs away from it. He sees three souls and tells them that he's not supposed to be there and that he has a gig tonight. An old soul tells Joe that she's been waiting for this moment to go to the great beyond. Joe walks away from them despite being warned not to go that way. When Joe turns around, he sees them ascend towards the bright light. Joe gets rattled and runs faster. He comes across more souls who are headed towards the light. Joe asks them to run, but they are not paying attention. As the light becomes brighter, Joe fights hard to get away from it. He then hits a portal that sends him away, allowing him to escape. Joe finds himself in a different dimension. He is greeted by curious souls and is lifted up like a little kid. A mentor named Jerry stops them. Joe asks if the place is heaven or hell. Jerry tells him that it's the great before in the name that they just changed to you seminar. Joe wants to know if he has passed away, and is said that he's not dead yet. Joe is then introduced to the you seminar spots that will help a soul get a complete personality. Meanwhile, from the great beyond, they notice that a soul is missing. Joe asks Jerry how to get back to Earth. Jerry answers that souls use the Earth portal once they have a complete personality. As Jerry turns around, Joe is gone. Joe runs toward the portal and jumps in. As he is getting closer to Earth, he gets sent back to the great before. He keeps giving it a try with no success. Jerry thinks that Joe is one of the mentors and introduces him to another person named Jerry. Joe explains to Jerry that he's not supposed to be there. 
Jerry tells him that he can always go back to the great beyond, but Joe does not want to. Terry lands at the U seminar and tells Jerry that a soul is missing. Jerry cannot believe it as the count has never been off for centuries. Terry is told to figure out how this happened as this is what he does. Terry then leaves and starts going through his files. Another mentor named Jerry explains to everyone via a giant screen that all new souls are giving unique and individual personalities. For the souls to have a complete personality, it should help them find their spark. Joe begins to fantasize about assisting a soul find his spark and about being sent back to earth to perform. Another mentor is tasked to match mentors with their soulmates. Soul number 22, who was mentored unsuccessfully by the likes of Gandhi and others, is paired with Dr. Borgensen, a Nobel Prize winner. He has shown his accomplishment in the form of a presentation. Soul number 22 appreciates his accomplishments but tells him that he should give up just like the other mentors before him and that he should go to the great beyond. Dr. Borgensen insists that she fills out her pass. Dr. Borgensen then reveals that he's not what the name suggests, and he's not even a mentor. She presses the floor, and a button appears. Joe puts his palm, and his life is shown. She then believes what he's been saying. Joe and soul number 22 see the life of Joe, including the very moment that he fell in love with Jazz. It also shows the number of times that Joe got rejected. Joe expresses how meaningless his life was. He asks for the badge from her, but it keeps returning back to her chest. They agree to turn it into an earth pass. Joe assures that he knows about sparks as his spark is piano. They go to the hall of everything. Joe suggests that baking could be her spark but finds out that both of them can't smell or taste. They try different things like killing a fire, painting, and other stuff, but none is her spark. As they exit out of the building, Joe reminds her that they don't have much time. Counselor Jerry comes into the picture and offers Joe to go to the great beyond. Sensing that Joe is not thrilled with the idea, soul number 22 insists that she try breakdancer first. Counselor Jerry approves. They go into a box, and she introduces him to Moonwind. Joe asks him if he can help him get back to his body. Moonwind assures him that he will as they are devoted to helping the lost souls of Earth. Moonwind's team helps a hedge fund manager get back to his body. Upon witnessing this, Joe thinks it will be easy, but his only option is to go to the great beyond after drawing a circle. Moonwind suggests that they try it again in a different place. Moonwind reminds Joe that he needs to tune back to his physical surroundings. A portal opens up. Moonwind tells Joe to maintain his meditative state. When Joe sees his body, he jumps towards the portal despite being stopped by Moonwind. Soul number 22 gets dragged, and they fall towards Earth. Soul number 22 lands on Joe's body while Joe lands on the cat. Amidst the confusion, the doctor and the nurse come in. Joe attempts to tell them what happened, but his voice is that of a cat. Soul number 22 tries as well, but she sounds like Joe. The doctor suggests that they both stay. Joe wants them to escape and look for Moonwind. Soul number 22 is having a hard time walking through Joe's body, but they are able to get out of the hospital without being caught. As they hit the street, they are greeted by the city's noise. This bothers soul number 22, but Joe encourages her to keep walking. Joe scratches 22 by accident after he reminds her not to stop in the middle of the street and 22 runs away, almost getting hit by cars. Joe apologizes to the shaken 22. Joe then steals a slice of pizza for 22, which she greatly appreciates. They find Moonwind spinning a sign and letting him know they need to switch bodies. Moonwind informs them that he needs to perform a ritual. Joe wants the ritual done as he needs to be at the half note by 7. Moonwind adds that the ritual can only be done at 6.30. They hail a cab which turns out to be what Dorothea is riding. They go into Joe's place. Joe gets a call from Curly but struggles to answer using his paws. The call goes to voicemail, and Curly tells him that somebody else gets the gig. Curly adds that he still wants Joe to be properly dressed tonight as he will still try to talk to Dorothea. A knock on the door startles both of them. It's Connie who is there to tell Joe that she wants to quit the band. 22 opens the door and shares her distaste about school. 22 leaves Joe and goes with Connie. Connie plays the trombone one more time. She wants 22 to decide if she really needs to quit. 22 notices that Connie is in the zone. Connie decides not to quit and leaves. 22 then goes back inside. Meanwhile, Terry finds out who the missing soul is and descends to Earth. Joe helps 22 clean up and dress. As he tries to trim her hair, he slips and cuts the wrong part of the head. They go to see Des, who fixes the haircut. Des goes on to share how he wanted to be a veterinarian instead of being a barber. 22 is playing around and drops her hat. 
as soon as she picks it up, the pants get ripped. Joe says that the only way to fix them is to go see his mom, who will not be happy if she finds out that he has a gig. As Joe and 22 enter the tailoring shop, they want to keep the gig away from his mom, only to find out that she already knows. He asks her if she can fix the suit. Her mom refuses to and proceeds to admonish him for going after this gig. As Joe rants about his mom not being able to understand what he wants to do with his life, 22 says the same thing that shocks Joe's mom. Instead of avoiding the confrontation, Joe decides to confront his mom. His mom explains that she does not want him to go through what his dad went through. Joe voices out that he does not want to die without pursuing his passion. His mom's face lightens up then grabs his dad's suit. Joe and 22 head back to the half note. 22 reflects about her life and adds that she should find her spark on earth. Moonwind then arrives and prepares to do the ritual. Joe asks 22 that he needs his body back now. 22 runs away while being chased by Joe without them knowing that they are headed towards the portal set up by Terry. 22 and Joe are then sent back to the U seminar, where they find out that 22 gets an Earth Pass. Joe walks 22 towards the Earth portal. As Joe moves away, 22 throws him the pass. Joe is about to throw it back, but 22 is no longer there. Joe goes back to Earth and asks Dorothea for another chance. Joe plays with the band to the delight of the spectators. Joe is then welcomed by Dorothea to the quartet. Joe gives his mom a hug as she goes home after watching the show. Joe tells Dorothea that he's been waiting for this moment his entire life, but he does not feel different after performing. Dorothea shares a story about a fish that wants to see the ocean even if it's already in it. Joe plays the piano and gets in the zone. He sees Moonwind, whom he asks to help him look for 22, who has become a lost soul. They try to catch 22, but the ship capsizes in the process. Joe pursues 22, but she is determined not to get cornered. Joe walks in the shoes of 22 and witnesses all the insults that make 22 feel worthless. 22 says that she won't be able to fill out the last box. Joe explains to her that the last box fills in as soon as she's ready to live. 22 goes back to being a ghost. Joe gives the badge and goes with 22. As 22 gets closer to Earth, Joe is sent back to the U seminar. The movie ends with Joe ready to go to the great beyond when Terry asks for a moment. She adds that Joe inspires all of them and gives Joe another chance to go back to Earth. When asked how he'd spend his life, Joe says he does not know, but he'll make sure to live every minute of it. Thank you for watching guys, if you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel. Bye.